I used to listen to good podcasts and everything was fine. But now I listen to this podcast as I lost my mind. My gym partner's a podcast. My gym partner's a podcast. Yeah! Bull shark, porcupine, I don't know what. Doing this podcast's a pain in the... Whoa! I'm a friendly armadillo. I, I swear to fucking God, Renee. I, I thought we weren't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> if the temptation was just there. I mean, how could we not open the episode that way? You can't blame Renee. Yeah. It's a good song. What... <laughs> Did you not hear it on on the top 40s list? (laughs) Gert, that song is Henry's soul. (laughs) And I think that's what makes it so just frustrating to listen to. It's the closest to his core. (laughs) Alright, everybody. Welcome to my Gym Partners of Podcast. It's been a bit, huh? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Um, Yeah. I mean, it's been a week. Right? It's it's been weird since like I don't think anything happened last week or anything. I don't know. No, nothing did happen last week. What a shame. Anyway, we're here. We're here talking about some some episodes. <laughs> I almost called them exciting episodes, but but they are episodes. <laughs> they... In case you couldn't tell, one of them's a Henry centric episode. Woo! We're finally the woo! name of the, yeah, yeah. the name of this woo! episode is uh, misgendering Henry and. <laughs> <laughs> it's called disregarding Henry. Um, it's not a good one. It's not. No. For a Even lot by of, my standards. It's yeah. It's one of those episodes that'll make you go. Uh, a lot. It'll make you breathe. It's like when you. It's. It's like when you're like turn the TV on and you're like I want to watch some cartoons and then you see like my gym partner's a monkey's on and you're like all right i guess i guess i'll watch it like it's not the worst thing i could watch but then you see it's disregarding henry and you're like i'll go outside instead actually yeah, i'll <laughs> stop watching tv actually because this isn't worth my time i'll just turn <laughs> off the tv and stare at the black screen for about the length of the episode and then turn it back on again <laughs> I'll watch the Food Network instead because that's where I've been brought to. There's nothing on. I have to watch Food Network. I have to watch Beat Bobby play. <laughs> I have to watch Beat Bobby play. Don't, get, don't get me started on Beat Bobby play. Why do they have a show called Beat Bobby play because still he's going? So, if they beat him, because they he's beat him. So fucking talented he's the <laughs> pinnacle of chefdom nobody but they, could but beat people Bobby already play. beat him what's the point <laughs> he just fucking lets them beat him they have to mix it up sometimes or it won't be interesting i've okay i've never seen an actual episode of beat bobby play so is it like they make it like two chefs like bobby himself and a chef just like it's make a not dish even and then a they bring chef. it it's just like somebody's mom or something it's just like an average <laughs> joe who has to fight bobby flay for and like they make sometimes they do like just a regular dish or they do like oh this is this is bobby's signature dish can yeah. they beat well, him bobby's and, gonna win that's and, not even fair no no but people do win against bobby's signature well, dish it's like I, ev- everything is kind of against bobby flay like even the host of the show is just like what are you gonna do bobby flay what are you gonna fucking do here and then they like slap like his ingredients off the table and he's just like yeah <laughs> So like anyway, he doesn't, this... really, he doesn't really want to be there. Like it wasn't his decision to make the show. Yeah, it's like we listen, Bobby Flay. You're under fucking contract with Food Network. You better goddamn do this show. People are going to fight you. Oh. Hey everybody, this is a My Gym Partners a Monkey podcast. <laughs> I, I think I think this discussion segues well into the themes. Of this episode, though, does it? <laughs> does it actually? Yeah. Is, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can you can interpret Henry as Bobby Flay and the <laughs> the agent that forced him to make the show as Jake Spider Monkey. <laughs> Without further ado, let's let's get into we that. Let's get to this. <laughs> All right, the lunchroom, lunch famous ah, the lunch ephemeral room. lunchroom. There for only moments, and then gone again, and then back, and then gone again. 
takes. They have like four backdrops in this show, and one of them is the lunchroom. The lunchroom, <laughs> a simple place where everybody can can be presented in a in a in a easy in an easy way. It's a, a public room, forum. A public forum. A and the forum. exchange of ex- <laughs> ideas. Where... Um, so Jake hops up on the table and like like the the crew minus Adam are all like kind of just like watching him d- kind of disinterested. But he chews a piece of bubble gum and he starts like just like really exerting himself. <laughs> and he's making little noises that make me uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chewing, still chewing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and and then he. There's like, he clenches and the bubble gum like makes bubbles, but they're coming from his ears. And everybody at the table with the same bored expression just goes like, wow. Yeah. That's so cool yeah. that you made that happen, Jake. Wow. I love the bubble gum out of ears trick. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Jake. Uh, and Adam approaches. He's like immediately done with it. He's like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> Like, Jake, Jake, what, what the, the fuck doing? is this? The, every lunch. The, I still haven't seen that boy bring his lunch yet. He had a tray in this scene, too, didn't he? He did. I'm, he so, did fr- I'm so goddamn frustrated. <laughs> well, well, wait, wait. It looks like a regular sloppy do- Joe. It's not a, you don't There's see definitely wor- a worm in there. I'm, don't even... I'm it, going to shit myself. It. I'm so angry. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. Stop it. <laughs> And, um, so Adam's like, what are you doing? And Jake's like, oh, I'm practicing for the talent show. And, uh, they're like, didn't you get banned from the talent show last year? And Adam's like, how did he get, how did he get, hey, how did he get banned from the talent show? It and came Luke... from somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere <laughs> dark and forbidden. So, so it... yeah, Jake blew bubblegum out his ass last year and got banned from the talent show wow uh, I, I can I tell can't... you the bubble gum must have not been pink coming out oh my god <laughs> oh my god oh my god i can't imagine why he was banned for something so incredible <laughs> anyway uh jake's like oh, i need to be a participant somehow in, in this in this thing i need it and i quote i need attention 24 hours a day what's basically. the point in living if you don't have an audience jake is Wink. bound to the to the <laughs> to the feelings of attention he doesn't he doesn't know how to live his life without eyes peering at him <laughs> call back to the detention episode i forgot the name of it already Me oh too. basic I jake also... yeah, because... oh yeah it was basic jake God, I want to do, like, a two-hour analysis of Basic Jake. <laughs> Basic Jake, I, could you imagine if, like, we just had an entire episode of Basic Jake, like, real Basic Jake? That'd be wild. Can you imagine if we could just, like, watch it every day? Then, then Jake would feel all the more real. He would be made real. By by our viewership of him, maybe his power. We, maybe if we believe in Jake enough, and not just us, I'm talking to the audience too, we can sort of create an energy that'll manifest itself. Is maybe a everybody Jake put your hands up. Yeah. We're going. I need all of your energy to manifest Jake Spider Monkey into the real world. I want to create a Jake Tulpa. I want. I want Jake to be real and exist. We're going to do the Slender Man style. Uh, Jake says to Adam, like, "Oh, you need a you you act. I mean, you be in the talent show. I'll be like your your like your, your, your mentor. Whatever. Just do it. Like, do it through." I need to like live through this experience through you, but Adam's like, I no, you're gonna have to find somebody else. And then Henry Armadillo walks by, says, "Hey guys," and nobody acknowledges him. They just do not acknowledge him. Living he keeps up on to, walking to, to the name, disregarding Henry. <laughs> He's just completely like not there. It's as if nothing happened in the scene at all. Because after but, that, Jake's just like, oh yeah, Adam, you could do it. 
<laughs> and I was like, I, I just said, I just said I didn't want to do it. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so here's where things start taking a turn. And this isn't even like two minutes into the show. It it's, starts getting bad. It just gets uncomfortable. Why does this show have to go those places? You know, it doesn't have to be like that. I understand it's an early 2000s cartoon show, but have some decency. God. Yeah, because uh, Jake is walking in, I guess, the like gym shower rooms. I remember seeing this room when J- when Adam was getting chased down by a documentary lady. When they thought that he was a mutant. <laughs> yeah, and God, and uh, he hears some angelic singing coming from one of the showers. No, no, you're not doing it. But I will. We we can say the lyrics of. Henry Armadillo, he's in there, and um, we're he, not he doesn't sing say it. the full lyrics we're here. Not, we're not gonna sing it. He, uh, he's just, he doesn't. He goes, oh, oh wow, Henry really Armadillo. Armadillo. I'm, I'm a, a gentle, gentle pussy willow. willow. <laughs> what does he say in this? What? What's a? Does he say lumbacadillo? What the fuck is that? <laughs> I uh, gotta pick a dillo. Anyway, it's terrible. It's like ear wrenching, but but Jake like peeks his little head in, and he's like, "You, you will be my star," and calls him Henrietta. like Hen- Henrietta. What's your name, kid? And he says, "Well, well, Henry. You know that." And and, <laughs> and this is meanwhile like Henry is like uncomfortable, like because like Jake just intruded in on his shower. You can hear like a an audible squeak as he like tries to cover himself, and Jake's just like looking at him. It's it's not good. This is not good. <laughs> no, and, Jake and, is just and... completely invading this poor it... poor man's space. I'm just yeah. <laughs> misgendering him. He calls him Henrietta. Uh, he there, we cut to like, I guess like just a common area of the school and uh, Jake is like showing Adam. He's like, check this out. Like, I don't even need you. I got Henry and Henry. uh, uh, (laughs) I I don't remember the context behind this, but I did write down this where like Henry, I guess was trying to explain himself or say anything. And Jake literally says, not now, sweetie, Jakey's talking and like pats him. And I just wanted to die. (laughs) (laughs) Jake does that so many times this episode. He he just he, he's so awful. Like he is, and it it gets even worse because after Adam hears Henry sing, he's like, "Oh, oh, Jake, you can't, you can't make this guy do this. This is awful. He will get like he's gonna get laughed at. It's gonna be like terrible for him." <laughs> and of course, it's gonna be so bad. Jake thought ahead. Wait, did he think ahead? Did he? Yeah, he made him sign a contract. Oh, oh yeah. That's true, <laughs> he did make him sign a contract, and Henry is just kind of bound to Jake at this point and has to <laughs> basically do, I guess, everything that Jake wishes. Mm-hmm. Which, can you imagine being in that situation? I'm pretty sure, like, Adam is manipulated into doing whatever Jake wants on a daily basis. He doesn't that's, even, that's this show. He doesn't even uh, have to fucking, like, sign papers. It just comes with being at the school, being his friend. And that's why, like, I sort of, like, uh, this episode makes me think of Basic Jake. Because, like, there's some, this is a thing that Windsor says later, and it's just, like, the general feel of this episode it's thesis statement, if you will, just feels like it's <laughs> it's it's reinforcing the themes of this episode as a whole, just through Henry, just no. like you know, as as a as a allegory for Adam. Another strange thing that I didn't note earlier that happened in this episode was, I d- I don't know like how exactly strange it like it really is, but. Jake addressing Windsor by name to Windsor felt very <laughs> odd. Like he was just like, 
Thanks, Windsor. Thanks for bursting my bubble, Windsor. Like, I don't... It feels like I've never... How, I, I how feel... often do we hear him say Windsor or, like, address him by name? Like, I feel like he, he talks to, like... He maybe, like, says their names when he's not talking to them directly, you know? Like, when he's, like, talking about, like, the whole group to Adam. But in this situation, it was just bizarre, it felt. Did y'all mm. did y'all feel that? No, I definitely did. I was, I was gonna say, like, it was weird hearing them... It was weird seeing... Th- them talk to each other before Adam is there, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, because Adam wasn't there at the table yet at the beginning, and it was like, oh, these guys actually like talk to each other. <laughs> but then it reminded me of like that one episode where it was like uh, Adam's birthday, yeah, and they also like were kind of friendly and talking there. But like Jake was kind of on like a different level, I guess. Mm-hmm. J- Jake was more focused on like Adam than anything. Yeah, Wasn't but it's, it's really rare to talk- see them just like not talking about Adam. And just kind of like existing. <laughs> so it's it's just like I guess this at passes the 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 Bechdel test in relation to Adam life. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the next scene here, and I wrote down because it surprised me so much. It's just the talent show, and I was like, oh, we're here already. Okay, it just okay because I guess there's more to, more stuff to talk about. The show keeps doing that where it's it like... keeps subverting the expectation that like the this thing that this event that it's going to lead up to in the episode is the main event but it's not it's actually just like a means to an end which i guess any event in a show is but you you, you know what i mean here where it's just, exactly what you mean they always raise the stakes they always make it really the end game of each episode is always very high stakes it's always up there. It's like you're on a TV show or you're going to be like, I don't know, you're going to be jumping killed. off of a train. <laughs> you're going to be killed by this cheerleader. Principal Pixie Frogs is like the, I guess, host of the talent show and the microphone's too tall for him. So he, he has, has to, to keep, he he has to keep jumping. He, he, he's a frog and he got to jump high. His eyes are kind of fucked up in this scene. That's so mean. Well, it's it's not his fault. It's how he was drawn. So Ingrid and Lupe are on the the stage first, and they start doing an interpretive kind of dance here. I don't know. It's like hip-hop a little bit. It's it's got a strange, like, rhythm to it. Uh... It's got a strange Lupe in it. Look, look at her front, front facing Lupe. I... Front facing Lupe is cursed. <laughs> front, I hate it. We, we, front facing Lupe is. I, I, I can hardly remember what she looked like. Just imagine it. Ah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Uh, and then there's like a. Do you remember the dolphin smart kid whose name I keep forgetting? Phineas. 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 Yeah. My name is Phineas. That's <laughs> Phineas like jumps through a hoop and eats a fish, but the fish is okay because it's just it another student. Bow. Yeah, whatever. It, they they all bow. It's you know, it's fucking Cyrus, it's uh, uh, Miss Chameleon, and Coach Gill. They're all here. Uh, being the me, judges. But why did you call him by his first name? Like <laughs> his name, <laughs> Mr. Hornbill, uh, Miss Chameleon, and Coach Gill are the judges, and I think they're trying to do the like American Idol judge thing, you know? Yeah, you can like, of course, like, Simon Cowell is presented by none other than Coach Gill. Yeah, and then like, uh, Miss Chameleon is what's her face. Uh, I, I have no idea. Pa- but... Paula, Abdul. Paula. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then, <laughs> would that make Mr. Hornville Randy Jackson? I, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not. Go- I don't see any qualities that Mr. Hornville shares being with Randy Jackson. I don't see anything. <laughs> 
so we we finally get to the Jake and the uh, well just the Henry's part, and Jake looks a little weird here. He's got his like arms are a bit disproportionate, and he just looks so stout but so big at the same time. And he's like, "You're on, kid. Now make me proud." And he gives him a little hug and then shoves yeah. him away. <laughs> and then Henry's on stage and says, "This song." Is my soul. Uh, hope oh, God. oh God, we. <laughs> I'm a friendly it's armadillo. This is not good radio. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a gentle, gentle pussy will. Piccadilly barbecue grill. Barbecue. I mastered that barbecue grill. Oh. And okay. Everybody cheers. They love it, right? Yeah, they think it's so like bad. It's, it's good. It's so and, bad. It's good. It's it's and then, incredible. And then some. And then a guy shows up, like a real human man is like, "Wow, kid! Like I need to have you on my show, Wacky Pet Tricks." And they're like, "What? How did you get here?" And I, I want to bring this up. Wandered in. <laughs> no, he he says specifically. My like my limo or whatever broke down like right outside the school, and I was like, Jake definitely did that. <laughs> it was definitely Jake. my God. Oh I my... didn't even consider that. I, I just thought either. it was like a funny little gag, but you know no, maybe. It, it definitely Jake was like, hmm. How can I get my precious Henrietta to uh, you know be seen across the nations? And he's he, he planned it like I, absolutely. That's terrifying. Just like taking it, just how meticulous Jake Spider Monkey was at just controlling fate. Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, Jake is like, "We'd love to be on your show," and Adam's like, "Uh oh, here we go." Um, this man, what's his name, Bert? I'm Bert Rivendale. Bert Rivendale, uh, voiced by Fred Willard. I was trying to like try to recognize the voice. Uh, he seems he's... very tired because we go to like this sh- we're, we're there at the show also now mm-hmm. and he's like you know sitting in makeup to to get to get ready to go out on stage and he's like reading the script and he just is like ah, this sucks like I... <laughs> he just goes he... like this this frog is act is making me hoppy ah make it stop <laughs> <laughs> but wait, 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 we, we, we glossed over a little bit, like, at the end, where Adam's like, what, what, he, he, he can't uh, just put Henry on live TV, he's terrible, why, why are people cheering for him? And, and oh, Windsor yeah. says something really poignant, I need, I need to... Of course you would never let us forget something Windsor says, <laughs> your favorite character. He's so cool, no. I love the way that Windsor speaks. <laughs> no, but he says something to the effect of, uh, once again, our our sense of irony has, has trumped our sense of decency. It's and true. And thrusted someone into the limelight. Someone mediocre. Is this, like, is this a call out voice post for us? <laughs> is Windsor saying that us throwing this mediocre cartoon into the limelight is... is this is this wrong what we're doing? Should we stop? Maybe that's, that's, this is why that quote felt so poignant. It works on just the level of like this show oh, itself. It, like its own ir- the our own ironic viewing of it like thrusted itself into the limelight again and just like it o- it's also true of ourselves it's it's transcendent this message can't Thanks, you feel Windsor. this <laughs> thesis Thanks, it's Windsor, it's for rife me with realize what's wrong with the world with my ways <laughs> with how i am <laughs> um it's, it's truly timeless, this show. Jake puts Henry in a dress. Um, he sure Henry did. looks nice in a dress, though, yeah, to be honest. Henry, Henry's fine in a dress, but Henry isn't comfortable with it. 
That's true. And J- but but Jake's like, oh, remember, you're under tr- contract. You yeah, have to I wear this see. dress for me, sweetheart. <laughs> ah! I wish he would stop. <laughs> oh, make it stop. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand what they were going with this. Adam decides to pull a funny prank and dresses up as Burt Rivendell, styles his what, hair the same why way, did steals some glasses. Idiot bitch! Why did he ever think that this would work? <laughs> he, he put like Burt has like a tooth gap, so he like draws in a tooth gap on his teeth, and he uh, he tries. He's like, "Oh, our show got canceled, everybody! Ah, uh, oh, sorry, can't can't do it." Jake, Jake does not. Does not <laughs> He doesn't buy it. Not Jake absolutely bit. doesn't buy it because he he figures everything out with a simple swift action. He erases the the magic marker that Adam painted over his his Tooth. middle teeth. It's like, well, I guess it really wasn't permanent after all. It's like you <laughs> fucking idiot. Don't you God I'm I shouldn't be so mean right now. I don't know why this is coming over me. But it just makes me... Why did he think that this would work? He doesn't... Just an I mean, it, it worked episode. on Henry. But I, Jake's too clever for it. Yeah, Jake is too clever. I guess he just assumed and, that his monkey friend wouldn't be able to tell. Jake does, after all, think all humans look like Adam. <laughs> It's true, so it probably wasn't that different than how he was already seeing Bert. <laughs> um. <laughs> There's a gag about, like, uh, it, uh, Jake says uh, he, he needs to be given time to shave uh, legs, to help Henry shave his legs. Like, that's the the implication you get. But then you hear, like, Jake screaming, and it's like, thanks, Henry. It's yeah, like he was shaving his legs. Jake, we gotta have a, a waxing legs joke, but it's about Jake. Jake was taking this time for himself for some reason. <laughs> so the the actual plan that Adam decides upon is that as before the curtains rise up to reveal Henry, um, uh, Adam just takes him. He like gets a little rope from like the top, like the the. the top part of the stage he just abducts. What's that called? the catwalk he just abducts him yeah he just like takes him um and then jake grabs on is like oh no you don't but they kind of tug back and forth until adam like basically gets like replaces henry at, on the stage right as the as the as the curtains go up and so J- adam decides to do what anybody would logically do when put in this situation to just sing to just, just sing. No, honestly honestly i I, I, I gotta give props to Adam for this. No, you don't. <laughs> you I, don't have to give him anything. <laughs> what props are there? I, I am he, curious he to decided, hear he, he decided to take Henry's place. He could have just, like, ran away. And, yeah, and he could have. Yeah. And nobody would have had to get embarrassed. <laughs> but no, then, then they would have just gone looking for Henry or, like, whatever. But he, he decided to just put himself out there. So, to save Henry and uh, to sacrifice himself for the sake of Henry, singing that awful, awful song. But the name of the show song. is Wacky Pet Tricks. Yeah, he just ruined the integrity of Wacky Pet Tricks. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Honestly, if if like a, a a biology researcher documentarist can confuse Adam for like a monkey or like some sort of weird creature. I think I think everyone will just buy it who's watching this show. <laughs> Adam's freakish enough to be mistaken for an animal by any human. <laughs> uh, and um, Jake's really excited about this new um, outcome here. He's like, well, now now you could be under contract with me. And Henry's like, wow, now, now Jake can ruin your laugh, Adam. And by exploiting you and your mediocrity. No but, like, but, but, uh, That's but. the show! Wow! Whoa. Whoa, we did it. The episode is done. The next episode. Oh, we God. Have... We're not even gonna, we're not even gonna, like, make any mention of it. Of, like, how bad this episode was. The next episode we have 
have on the list is nice mustache. And I, th- my, my opinion of this mustache went from, oh boy, to, oh, I know this episode, <laughs> like, immediately. Whenever I think about mustache episodes, I think about every cartoon from this time period, because it felt like there was always a mustache episode. Conan Kids Next Door? Mustache episode. Was there one for Fairly Odd Parents? Probably. Yes, there was. Yeah. The... Uh, El Tigre mustache, mustache episode. Tigre. That one did it the best, uh, I believe. Mucha Lucha, was there a mustache episode? I don't think. I don't. Uh, should have watched more Mucha Lucha. I don't remember too it's much Mucha Lucha. There probably was a, mu- a mustache episode of Mucha Lucha. There had to have been. Camp Laszlo? Be... I don't mm, know. Maybe not. Oh, this was a, this was a strange one to have a mustache episode considering their their majority of the cast is animals which which have like fur encompassing over the majority of their body but I guess yeah. you know with with a with a monkey it works because they got no like actual facial hair it's just all over the place right so here we go um Jake has a mustache. That's how the episode starts. Jake he's has got a, a nice. Mu- he's got a nice big old mustache, right? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. nice and and full. And and Adam's like, uh. Yep. The- Much like in Guano in sixty seconds, we we start off with a montage of uh, Adam going like, "Hey, uh, it, it you notice that weird thing?" And then Jake's just like, "No, I don't. No, I don't know what you're talking about." Until Adam exasperatedly has to, like, call out, What is the deal with that mustache? You have a mustache on your face! And Jake's like, oh, yeah, this, uh, I was just hoping nobody would notice it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just woke up with it. I, I didn't have time to say, shave it because my mom used all the razors this morning, shaving her back. Then he's like, they're at the lunchroom, and he's like drinking soup, and he keeps getting soup in his mustache. It's gross. I don't this, like, like it. There's this like drippy cave sound effect coming from from his his face. The, but the but sound at first, of the soup. At first, he's just seeming like resentful of the mustache. Like, oh, he's. Uh, I'm just gonna shave it like after school once they get a hand of the razor. But then, like, out of nowhere, Ingrid and Lupe, like, uh, oh, just come around and they're like, wow, you're so hot, Jake. Look at your mustache. <laughs> that, just comes out of nowhere that was and just... then isn't remarked upon at all for the rest of the episode. Oh, Jake, you're so handsome with the mustache. Like, I guess, I guess Jake needed, like, an impetus, like, a first reason to be like, hey, let me rethink this. Wow. But, like, this, this is the most, like, just... It's just because Jake has never shown any interest in, like, attracting female attention before. So it's, like, a weird motivation. Like, you think it would be more, like, later on in the episode, like, other students are like, wow, look at Jake, he's so cool with his mustache. I feel like that's a better, like, first, like hit there where you go like oh he he wants you know attention he he likes attention this it's, makes sense it's better than just like fucking lupe and Ingrid who prior to our knowledge like prior to this episode our only knowledge of their opinions of jake is jake is ugly as shit <laughs> jake is just so fucking hard to look at i can't stand it <laughs> so like it was a weird it was just weird hearing, like, compliments that were showing, like, some sort of, like, like interest in Jake coming from them. It was just awkward, but I guess, I guess you know, it's dark enough that it shows that, like, wow, hey, yeah, Jake's life is really turning around with this mustache. And, like, uh, after a scene transition, some kids are like, as you he, as he said, they're like, wow, what a cool mustache Jake has. Wow, uh, so cool. Jake's just living it up, too. And, and he's fully embraced the mustache lifestyle. It did he not... automatically <laughs> knows everything about wearing a mustache. It did not take him any time at all to pick up these, like, these qualities of a mustache haver. He points... 
Adam, he's like, oh, you could be my comb holder. And he's like, what? It's comb like, oh, every keeper. mustache has, like, mustache guy has, like, you know, a guy to hold his, co- like, mustache comb for him. Yeah. And it's this disgusting comb full of, like, hair and shit in it. I hate Chunks. it. Chunks. Just a gross little, a gross little item. I don't know why every prop in this show has to be, like, gross by default. I don't know <laughs> either. The only one that was, like, not like that was the shiny thing. They ne- true. they need a really <laughs> good reason for it to be not disgusting. Especially when it's in Jake's hands. That's true. Oh, it- Jake is like, oh, you read about it in the mustache books. He opens his locker and like a pile of them just like crush Adam. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> That's the he- end of Adam. Adam dies there. It's kind of sad. It's kind of a dark dark turn yeah a little little bit of dark humor um (laughs) he pulls out some nunchucks which apparently you become a master at when you have a mustache which cool jake starts saying racist things (laughs) 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 okay she's not wrong (laughs) i mean he does he says like chop suey or something like that. Like, oh yeah, oh, then that. he says kamikaze. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck? yeah, that that is racist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and yep. That's it's, some, it's sometimes hard to gauge it because it's Jake Spider Monkey, but we have to call him out when he's doing bad things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of like of that that character Tom Kenny played in Elf Bowl. Oh my god! <laughs> Rapple, the, the, the only black elf that yeah, so, also rapped. Elf Bowling the movie is is a great movie, but the, its one critical flaw is that Tom Kenny plays the only black elf in in the show, uh, in the movie, and his name is Rapple. Which I guess is supposed to be like you know rapping presents, but it's also because um haha he he's black so he raps, and he has just a a, 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 a voice. Yeah, Tom Kenny. <laughs> I I Tom Kenny. I'm adding you right now. You better give everyone listen. a public apology for this listen. terrible thing you did. Listen, listen, this. To be fair, this no. is a movie that, like... <laughs> no, not to be fair. I'm not going to be fair about this one. I'm not going to be fair about elf bowling. <laughs> Sometimes movies need criticism. And this is this is no exception to that. Uh, then there's a car in the school. <laughs> yeah, Jake has this big old like fucking hot rod that's got a mustache at the front and this like this music's playing you know that this like I don't know what you'd call it western it's like a, kind of a western tinged like music street country street country that's a good <laughs> I don't know if that's right at all I mean it sounds fitting enough but yeah, that's playing, and it's just like, you ready to go, little man? Get in my car. <laughs> Completely disregarding the little, like, bit with, like, Bull Sharkowski being intimidated, by the way, which was kind of nothing. We got yeah, a co- it, close-up it, of his pathetic face. I, I just kind of forgot about it. It's not <laughs> like, I, I mean, like... What was this supposed to tell us? It's not like we see Jake Spider Monkey getting intimidated by like Bull Sharkowski ever anyway. Like it, very it happens rarely. Once. Like very once ever. Very yeah, like once ever that happens. And in this instance it doesn't happen because Jake's just like I have nunchucks. And I'm going to and shove exactly one of these up your nose and make your nose look like a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> he he's <laughs> that was stupid. In, I'm sorry. <laughs> they're in they're in Jake's car and on the road. On the road, and I, I love this bit because I don't know if y'all know this, but it's like. 
it, whenever you show like somebody riding in a car in a cartoon, they like it's like a rule like i don't know who made it up but like they absolutely need to be wearing seat belts like in a kid's cartoon uh and i just thought found it funny that like jake reaches over and like tenderly <laughs> buckles adam up <laughs> like <laughs> is that like an actual rule it is that is um, like they have to show it like yeah like there's a there's a funny bit in like i, I like i don't think it's ever supposed to be a bit but it's always funny when like characters get into a car in a cartoon and it's like okay seatbelts like there's a bit in um we bear bears in the episode hurricane how where like panda and charlie are like in a car like in a rundown car and it gets like pushed down a cliff and like as it's like slowly going down the cliff and like getting ready to be in motion they like are like screaming but they're also slowly buckling up like because they have to (laughs) it's like required that's so funny like (laughs) <laughs> you, it's like it's like it's a bad influence for kids if you don't show them like wearing yeah. a seatbelt that's so funny yeah exactly that's why I was like kind of curious about like the nunchucks thing because like nunchucks are definitely a thing that kids should not be wielding those are banned I don't know I think school. we should give we should give kids nunchucks what's wrong with that yeah I mean they're not that dangerous they're just sticks on a chain or nay there, there was a whole Johnny <laughs> Test episode about how dangerous nunchucks were <laughs> and you trust Johnny Test <laughs> yeah you trust the, Johnny Test you think... hey you know who has nunchucks and who's a cool guy who Michelangelo the ninja turtle oh yeah are you saying he's bad influence on kids you know what? You're right. I don't know why I never thought about that. Yeah, think really. before you speak. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Steve, so they're on the road. Fucking Steven Universe over here, just <laughs> trying to tell everybody not to use nunchucks. <laughs> don't call me that. <laughs> <laughs> they're on the road. <laughs> Guys, we can't use nunchucks. <laughs> They're on the We're road. They're sword. driving. <laughs> Violence is bad, even against They're people driving. who deserve it. They're fucking driving on the road, and the cop <laughs> tries to pull them over. <laughs> 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 I don't know why we're talking about it. I, I, I like Steven. I do, I do too. <laughs> I just think it's really funny. <laughs> How about you were upset <laughs> by me calling you that, Renee? <laughs> they get pulled over by a cop. Yeah. <laughs> they get pulled over by a cop, and the cop's like, nice mustache. Hey, and they do a little, like, secret handshake. They're like, ah. <laughs> They start yeah, laughing. Mustache Lodge member. Yeah, Mustache Lodge member. There's a Mustache Lodge? Whoa. What the fuck? Says Adam. Anyway, I'm mature now, Adam, so go home, little boy. Yeah. <laughs> I got more important things I'm gonna, to do. Maybe I'm going to go work in construction. I don't know. <laughs> the way that he says that, there's something about it. it it's just like, maybe, maybe do construction. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to go, go where, where, where my mustache, mustache takes me. Where my mustache takes me. So he's gone, and the next day at school, uh, Adam is explaining this to Windsor and Slips, who were like, uh, have you seen uh, Jake? We want to ask him some mustache chips, which, I'm sorry, Slips, I don't know how you got that hair on your head, but you are not getting any hair on your on your lips. I'm sorry, it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, Slips, you're not going to be growing hair on your lips. Don't, cr- also, don't good crush qu- his dreams. Also, good <laughs> question, Lucy. What the fuck is... Where did his hair come from on his head? Is it's it a, a wig? wig? Yeah, it's a wig. 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 <laughs> uh- I never understood that meme. What does it mean? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> People just started saying it one day, and I... And I and I never it really was... questioned it. Well, like most memes, it was stolen. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> anyway, Windsor mentions how uh, a mustache is a powerful muse and that Jake is probably gone forever uh, because of this one kid who got him. This other monkey kid who, like, two years ago or something got 
his mustache, and now he and like they haven't seen him since. Tom E. Tamarin. Tom E. Yep. Tamarin is gone. He's missing. He's like, no, they, he's not missing. <laughs> they, they cut to like oh he, where he is now, and it's like a surgical procedure of like a doctor uh, doing a brain transplant. That doesn't and then, make any sense. And he takes off like his the scrubs, and it turns out to be Tommy Tamarin, oh, like on a stool. He's a brain surgeon. I think I get it. What? So like he took out an entire brain and then replaced it with another. I think it was a joke. <laughs> I think I don't think it was meant to be realistic. <sighs> yeah. Like... Sorry, I just I just got that. Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I kind I kind of assumed the joke was that like you you expect that like Tommy Tamron was just like on the surgical table like getting like a brain surgery done on him, but yeah, then he turned out to be joke. the doctor. That's what I thought the joke was too. And I I like how like the nurse hugs him and he's kind of like pushes her away. He's like rebuffs her affections i don't know anyway Watch it makes sense mustache. because he's he starts saying like to windsor and adam and stuff he's like ah oh, my life's great you know i'm i work every single day also weekends also holidays i'm so successful and adam's like well i guess we don't have to worry about jake i guess we'll just let him like, are you crazy <laughs> <laughs> you crazy that's no don't let it don't let his mustache, like, don't let your mustache control his fate. It's awful. No, but, but you're, but you're, you said you were happy, right? I'm 13. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I, I, I really love this part. This part sticks out to me because of just this, this uh, Twilight Zone-esque horror story of this monkey kid who has been fated to, like, have a mustache and is now just, like, Having to work as a doctor, the, the stress, the pressure, all because of this mustache. Save it's... your friend before it's too late. I just, I just love it. This, this idea of this like thirteen-year-old kid suddenly thrust into adulthood by this. It's, it's very, very macabre. But anyway, Tommy Tamarin. Um, he gives them some insider mustache info to beat Jake's mustache. He also gives them, the... like, a shaver, which is also really gross, has hairs in it already, and chunks of something. I, I really wish it didn't look like that. It was it was gross looking. Very dirty. And he, says, he gives them insider information, like you said, because, uh, you know, the nunchucks, the nature's, nature's defense mechanism... Uh-huh. Uh, and and he's he's telling this to Adam and Adam's just like giggling. He's like, "Don't don't you know I could get uh uh banned from the lodge? What they'd do to me if I they knew I was giving out mustache code?" See, I know like, that your mustache is tickling me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny. It's a funny. Funny, guy. funny, funny. Funny, funny, funny. My gym oh. partner is funny. So we we cut to a Seven Eleven, you know, ostensibly a a Seven Eleven, and, and uh, Jake is just practicing with his nunchakus. He's just still being racist, <laughs> and um, Adam is just like, "Hey, Jake." You want How about I make you not racist? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he doesn't he, say that, but he does pull out a razor. And he's like, "Gas, yeah, like you're not gonna take away my." Did we mention that he's at like a Seven Eleven here? We did. I did say that. Okay, I just want to emphasize that it's just, it's not a Seven Eleven. It's like a. 24 7. 7 but it's definitely 7-Eleven. It's a uh, has anybody ever actually been to a 7-Eleven? I don't think yes. I have. I, what do you yeah. mean you haven't been to a 7-Eleven? I don't think I've been to a 7-Eleven like and it, to be fair I don't think there are many in Tennessee. Yeah, it ever since I moved here there haven't been that many. Aren't they like really like are they nice? Are they nicer no. than your well, typical gas station? 
No, they just like it's like a twice daily, but like it's basically like a twice daily, but it has more emphasis on like different kinds of drinks you can get, oh, like I slushies see. and things like that. Oh, I gotcha. They're they're mainly for reconnecting with old weed smoking friends that are racist. Yes. And anyway. then you don't want to <laughs> hang out with them again. But yeah, a, a similar experience is happening here where where Jake is threatening <laughs> Jake is threatening Adam with nunchakus. But uh, Adam is saying also says, Jake is smoking weed in this scene because that's what the mustache is doing. It's making him smoke weed. <laughs> Adam. Adam makes a Cal Arts bean face and, and says, uh, You can't hit me if I call out fisticuffs. Oh, oh, Jake is powerless to use his nunchucks. That was a big move on Adam's part. That was a. Jake is going to really. He's going to really give it to him. Give it to him. He's going <sighs> to. Can we just send this? All right. they put their fists up and they start circling around each other like idiots for like days and then they're like oh this is tiring and they're all sweating jake wipes his face and the mustache just comes clean off oh what was it jake your mustache it's off and jake's like what what and oh the mustache it wasn't a mustache. It's a it's a fuzzy a cat caterpillar. Why was Adam so scared? Is he? Afraid? I mean, it's They're, it's, it's a horrifying big. looking caterpillar. I, 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 it's big. It's it's got a weird mouth. It's got strange it's, eyes. It squeaks like a mouse. It might be sentient. It might I mean, be sapient. Doesn't it like yawn? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it yawns like. Yeah. And it's. It freaks me out. It still freaks me out. It's a little weird thing. It's I feel like it's like a parasite. Being so mean to the caterpillar. The caterpillar was just taking a nap. <laughs> but Listen. now, oh, oh, now, but now, oh, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking back to like some of the things that happened earlier in the episode with this mustache. Like I mentioned the that, that, that that like Jake got soup in his mustache. Well, at one point, he like puts his mustache in his mouth and like sucks all the soup out of it and it's just what are you that was a caterpillar (laughs) that poor poor caterpillar was just getting so much jake all over it the mustache i mean the caterpillar lands on uh, after they're like they're like tossing it back and forth it lands on adam's face and who should come by but carrie Carrie. And then Adam goes, oh, <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Call 911! <laughs> and Carrie's impressed with his mustache. He Adam confiscates the car from Jake and is like, go go get us some slushies, Jake. And go so get me Jake does. Like... And keeper. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of where the episode ends. And then the like, the the scene that the credits bit we get is Adam and Carrie sitting on the car uh, drinking slushies and then like Carrie starts going in for a kiss, which is <gasps> shocking. Which is shocking. I, I don't know. Like I <laughs> my my assumption for this is <laughs> that she doesn't have any interest in Adam. It's just the caterpillar has toxic pheromones that it releases <laughs> and it just made her delirious. That's. <laughs> That's my take on it. What are y'all's thoughts? Um, I mean, I guess that's a good, about as good of a take as any. In an episode where a caterpillar infests a, uh, a kid's face. I don't know. This... <laughs> bad, bad, bad. I don't want to call it a bad episode, but I am going to call it a weird one. I, I, I laughed a lot more in, in, in Nice Mustache. Than I, I d- did in disregarding Henry, where I mostly just like rolled up into a ball and pretended it didn't happen. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Disregarding Henry, that that's a bad episode. We don't, you know, you can uh, skip that one on your like, you know, binge watching uh, of my gym partner is a monkey. But uh, nice mustache. It's it's got some funny jokes. It's got some funny world building. Like, comical, like, uh, stuff with, like, this mos- mustache lodge. Tom E. Tamarin is, like, a, a very great joke that, I, that I'm that uh, i fond of. It's one of Just those... the dark humor it's, of this kid. 
it's one of those episodes that takes place like outside of Charles Darwin, so like it's kind of refreshing to get right, different yeah. backgrounds and stuff. I I I can in, I can appreciate that from this episode. Anyway, um yeah, should we should we read some comments, y'all? Yeah. It's about time for that, isn't it? All right. All right. So last you know, even though like last week was a blur. We got we got some comments still from it, so let's let's read them out, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's yeah. go ahead. Um, I think I might read. I, I'm gonna read this first one here, if that's okay. all right okay. with y'all. This is from Agent Emerald. I don't know if I should be happy I'm finally caught up with the series or terrified of the of the Jake's power, the Jake's power. My dear, <laughs> I'll just be both. As you should. As you should. As you should, Agent Emerald. Yeah, both. We all are. Both of those emotions, uh, being being excited, being terrified, they're they're kind of the same feeling, just a different flavor. So can't can't worship a god you don't fear. Yep. <laughs> anyway, say, saying it right. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, you you want to read the next one? So so Reese writes to us again. Uh, they write. Uh, Thanks for going through the trouble of tracking down the pilot for such a powerful show. I enjoyed the artistic recreations, and wow, Renee really took one for the team in that one scene. And you bet I did! I'm t- taking back the veil. Alright, that- <laughs> It's gone. It's gone. It's gone now. We've yeah. burned it up. <laughs> I, guess, I guess this is- the veil's just not there. Can't- s- everything's exposed now. Yeah, we, Renee was Renee did the art for last week's episode where he talked about the very real pilot that we saw, um, and I think it, 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 Gert was the one who particularly remembered the bit about um, Jake being in Bull Sharks Kowski's mouth, and Renee really uh, did a solid by drawing it like three times. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate how like how well Renee was able to capture the essence of that scene because that scene in my in my mind haunts me at night. I have dreams about it. Um thanks. It haunts my mind too. As did all the other scenes. But I'm glad I'm glad you appreciated my artistic renditions. I'm I'm glad uh I could have really like shown the pilot for what it was. Uh since there's no trace of it left on earth nope never i'm gonna read the next one from burgundy is a lesbian jake spider monkey kin checking in again getting a word in on that hot jake versus adam morality debate just want people to know in my kin timeline adam was indeed struck down by the gods for his hubris at the height of his power don't know if this changes anything but i thought you should know love the podcast keep up the great work (laughs) That that is that is a great word, uh, you know. Any any like uh, insight, especially from someone uh, with this, with this background, you know, it's it's helpful in you know our ongoing discourse about Jake versus Adam. You know, uh, we're seeing a lot of stuff with Jake here, some 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 weird stuff. But I'm yeah, just, we haven't uh, had a, we haven't had a like Adam is an asshole episode in a while. I'm just happy to know that Jake likes the show. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you're watching, Jake. Thank you. Um, Thank you. For we being also so merciful. We had some art done for <laughs> for last week's episode by at it's Seth J M on Twitter, and it's a uh, we retweeted it, and we'll put it up here. But it's a it's a gif of Jake, just a normal gif. Yeah. Nothing, it's just too it's wild. Just, it's just pretty. It's, uh, it's, it's just a good gif. I like delightful it. eyes. Watching over us. I like looking Next. at it. I love us. the pencil strokes. Next week, we'll be talking about the episodes. <sighs> yep. Poop scoop <laughs> and leaf of absence. So get ready for those. Um, I'm going to the... be out of. T- Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. You keep going. I'm going to be out of town next weekend. Uh, I got some important business to attend to. Coincidentally, um, coincidentally, for the poop will, scoop episode, <laughs> I will be watching it, so don't worry. But I will be out of town. Um, possibly gonna have Shirley fill in for me, but or maybe even Allie. We don't know yet exactly. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. 
but uh so sorry to miss out on that one but uh we'll see y'all next week right yeah, yeah. have a good time good time good, good time it'll surely be a highbrow episode that oh, i'm sure, sure. I'm so excited for an episode called poop scoop it... and you should be too please please be excited as we are please. i'm lucy i'm kurt and i'm renee and, and this has been another wacky monkey butt episode of <laughs> my <laughs> dip partner the podcast. <laughs> 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 <laughs>